Remove all quick release accessories from the chair, including the backrest, cushion, armrest, front rigging, and wheels. Shown are the telescoping and one-piece crossbar styles. This video will show width adjustment with the one-piece crossbar. Remove the seat pan fasteners and seat pan. For larger width adjustments, it may be necessary to order a replacement seat pan and push bar. If fitted, the push bar width must be adjusted, which will require removal of the tilt trigger. Remove the tilt cable from the trigger assembly. Pry the cable away from the push bar or back tube, then, using the trigger handle, pull the cable sheath fitting through the mount. Then slide the cable termination out of the trigger handle. Remove the trigger base. Ensure the internally threaded spacer is removed. If necessary, push the remaining spacer and fastener clear of the push bar. Remove the anti-tippers and axle plate assembly to improve access to the crossbar mounting fasteners. Reposition the upper frame of the wheelchair to improve access to the rear upper frame crossbar. With the tilt trigger removed, it is necessary to squeeze the activation lever of the mech lock directly. Remove the cover plate fasteners and cover plate. Shown are the four locations of the crossbar mounting fasteners. Remove the mounting fasteners on one side of the chair, noting which fastener came from which location. This will completely detach the side of the wheelchair. Note the position of the front rigging receiver if fitted. Note the position of the front rigging receiver if fitted. Fit the required spacer to the exposed end of the crossbars. Each spacer will add one half inch to the width of the wheelchair. When adjusting the width of the wheelchair, the adjustment should be completed in a symmetric manner on both sides of the wheelchair. Remove the current crossbar mounting fasteners. If adding spacers, use longer replacement fasteners. If removing spacers, use shorter replacement fasteners. The replacement fastener should be one half inch longer for each spacer added or one half inch shorter for each spacer removed. Loosely install and tighten each of the fasteners by hand. Take care not to damage the threads in the end of the crossbar. Repeat the process of replacing the fasteners for the lower frame rear crossbar. Loosely tighten the fasteners to prevent excessive movement of the chair while assembling the upper frame. Repeat the process of fitting the spacer and replacing the fasteners for the upper frame front crossbar. Reinstall the front rigging receiver in the original position or refer to setup chart 85013. Loosely install and tighten each of the fasteners by hand. Take care not to damage the threads in the end of the crossbar. Repeat the process of fitting the spacer and replacing the fasteners for the upper frame rear crossbar. Torque the fasteners to specification.
Reinstall the cover plate. If desired, the seat width can be adjusted in increments of one half inch by adjusting only one side of the wheelchair. If adjusting the seat width in increments of one inch, after one side of the chair has been adjusted, repeat the process for the other side of the chair. If fitted, reinstall the push bar fasteners. Ensure the push bar width matches the lower backrest width. If fitted, reinstall the trigger using the inboard push bar fastener. Reinstall the tilt cable. Slide the cable termination into position in the handle, then pull the cable sheath through and beyond the trigger mounting base. Finally, use the trigger handle to pull the cable sheath fitting into position. Check trigger travel, and if necessary, adjust cable turn buckle. Triggers should have a small amount of free play when fully released. Reinstall the axle plate. Torque the fasteners to specification. 